Glenda, it's so beautiful here. As we were flying up here, you could see like the colors are starting to turn here. Like when we left Whitehorse, it's full on summer. But as we make our way north, you can see the, the colors turning and before long, uh, there will be no leaves around here. Yeah, by the time you go home, it'll be uh, all the fall colors might have been here and gone. Already. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is that quick, right? <laughs> This country is brings back a lot of memories for me. And actually 1996 was the last time I was in the Mackenzie. So I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate you inviting me here and the team. And um, we're just so excited to get out in the mountains with you. I'm Glenda Grout. I'm the outfitter here at Canal Outfitters. I've been here for five years. Me and my husband, Glenn, and our kids come up every summer. And this is how we love to spend our life putting hunts on for other people and helping their dreams come true. We're later August. This is my favorite time to hunt sheep. So this is your guys' cabin. You guys can make yourselves at home in here. Crash in here. This is our cook shack. So this was built in uh, 67 by Gordon Eastman. So in the film, he comes up like in a station wagon and does the canal road. We'd backpack for 30 days. We'd lived off the dehydrated food for 30 days. And he comes to here and he builds this cabin on the film that we still use for the cook shack. So the minute he arrived there, he started building the cabin. And he'd brought along a cabin builder that done it all his life. His name is Cougar Long. Not every log, cope them a little. They were just right. He'll work on this cabin for the next two and a half months when he isn't guiding. It's cool to look back at the what it looked like back then and stuff and have it like on video. Is the first uh, outfitted hunt in the Northwest Territories. Really? Mm hmm On film. And it was right here. Yeah. So it was Canadian American National Oil Line is what Canal stands for. And so my grandpa actually came and packed the surveyors in who surveyed the south end of the road here. Nice. Yeah, so. so you've got some history here. Yeah, and like, I've worked in like four different areas up here and three of them had the canal road running right through it, so. Nice. Let's look at this map. Yeah. This is our concession that runs all the way from here all the way down to here. It's the biggest area in the Northwest Territories. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, this is awesome, Glenda. It's beautiful. So you're going to be my guide. Yeah. And I've never been guided in my life. Just so you know, I'm going to do my best to be a, the proper client. <laughs> what? I thought I was just going along for the ride here. Like, I was like, oh, he's a guide. He does it all himself all the time. I'll just like, you know, follow along, you know. I think we're just going to have fun. Yeah. It's not that big, I swear. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you ladies for today. You guys both did a wonderful job and I will see you in a few days. Okay, good luck. Northwest Territories here, we're so lucky to be able to use a helicopter on our backpack hunts. Because of our big, vast country, it allows us to access one end of our area to another on any given hunt, and it allows us to manage our game so well that we're not hunting the same valleys out of the same base camps over and over again. And the helicopter allowing us to get to even the farthest reaches of our area in 45 minutes on a flight. On the last hunt, we had a 72-year-old guy here, and he was able to harvest a sheep that he had been dreaming about his whole life. 
and on this hunt here with Greg, he's in peak physical condition, so it's a little bit of something for everybody and the population and different terrain that the sheep live on, we can take that in account from one hunt to another. Somebody's physical condition, what they're gonna physically be able to do in order to harvest a sheep. Coming in here was unbelievable. Even as a pilot, just coming in through these mountains in a helicopter, and it's a different perspective than fixed wing. It absolutely is. It's, um, I'm like a kid in a candy store. The aviation side is one thing, but to be here in the mountains and look around here, it doesn't matter where you get dropped off because these mountains are no joke. This is legit sheep hunting terrain. <laughs> Super untouched country up here. I uh, fly around in that helicopter and often there's days where I look over at the pilot and I'm like, don't you just love our life? Do no you not love our job that this is what we get to do? Yeah. Yeah. I've got 20 some rams myself and I've been hunting in the Yukon for that many years been guiding. I, I have no idea how many sheep hunts I've been on, but I'm at an excitement level of like, it's my first sheep hunt. Home sweet home. We could set up camp here and then uh, go try and do some glassing because we are up high already and see what we can see around. And Perfect. Then get after it in the morning. Yeah. That's what we get to look at for the next 10 days. have been guiding for 13 years before becoming an outfitter and I was raised in the industry. My dad guided and my mom cooked and it's kind of in our blood, like my family, all of us are really drawn to it. Even my sister, who's totally a city girl, she still feels drawn to the mountains. So I count my blessings every day that I get to spend my life doing what I love and it doesn't really feel like work ever. See if she's down at the bottom. Look a little bit bigger bodied with the ram. If you look up here with your naked eye, it looks like there's rock everywhere, but it's quite surprising how much green there is up in there, those rocks where your sheep can be feeding anywhere. We picked up some couple rams down in the bottom and it's not uncommon for them to, no. to be in this country. This time of year when it's starting to cool off and the grass is starting to turn up here, we see them down low in the bottoms feeding on willows and in the timber like quite often in this country. So you got to look down in there too. So we'll see if we can get a better look into mm -hmm. it. Yeah, once we get out farther, we'll spend a little bit more time when we can, it opens up and we can see more of this drainage. We'll stay a little bit longer and see if we can catch something feeding because this is the best time of day when they're up moving around to try and catch them. Perfect. This area that we're in has been being outfitted since the 60s and things have probably changed a lot over the last few years. I think some of the old outfitters might roll over in their grave when they see how we do it these days, but they used to do 21 day long hunts and some of them were on film as well. That evening, I got a chance to hunt for this ram. I saw him alone. He has about a curl and a quarter here. It's 40 inches around the curl. He's what I call a museum type sheep. Absolutely perfect. He even has his lamb tips. He's nine years old. It's pretty neat to look back at how they used to do things and how we continue on to hunt here. So we have a total of four rams that we can see so far. Yeah. But as uh, sheep hunting, these things can pop out of the rocks at any time, yeah. anywhere. Spending a little more time looking into this, just the way the rams traveled and stuff, would kind of lead me to believe there may be more in there. Later on, probably go over and look into the next drainage and then see what we can see again tonight in the prime time. Yeah. Get some movement going.
We have the sheep on the other side of the river. Which is not where we're going because we have sheep right here. <laughs> so looking in the distance sometimes too far, further than you should. Yeah. <laughs> but because you can't help yourself, that's what you do. That's not where we're going. No. We're going the other direction. So this morning, we've seen three legal rams already. So it's pretty cool to be you know, in great sheep country where every valley or drainage that you're looking right, right where we are, we're finding legal sheep. Are they rams? Couldn't tell. Yep. They're rams. Not a monster by any means. Yeah, they're both young rams. Mm -hmm. These two, they're heading toward us, so we get to might get to watch them get up close and personal with them. That's super cool. Yeah. Big rams, no big rams. I could do that all day. Yeah. They just walked right straight through the saddle, and it is so cool to watch them. I think that ram is legal at five years old. Everywhere you sit, you know, you're sitting on sheep shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a good place to be. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice thing about backpacking when you're camped up high. You know, we've been hunting essentially ever since we woke up this morning. You know, we don't really want to teach them what we are. No. <laughs> They're not that far from leaving. Yeah. You know, the game plan is to head up to the top of this mountain and just look over a few more drainages and who knows what you run into. That's the beautiful thing about it. I think the way that I view hunting is a little different than, than most people. It's almost like a, a spiritual experience for me, being out there on the mountain and you get up high and you've worked so hard to climb up to the top of the mountain and you look around and you feel so small in this country, but it really grounds you and brings you back to the things that really matter around you. So Glenda's led us to the top of the mountain well, was I leading? <laughs> Glenda has made sure that we've made our way to the top of the mountain and the vantage point is amazing. It's beautiful up here, but there's one thing. We're cliffed out <laughs> and we can't go any further. We can't go any further that way in the direct line to the next mountain. But we can see lots, so we'll stay here for a while till the evening when stuff starts moving, see if anything comes out and then tomorrow we'll pack up and go around below the cliffs. Either way, we see sheep or we don't see sheep, there's no better place to be spending your day than right here as far as I'm concerned. We spent the better part of the day up on the top of the mountain, just glassing this main basin that we've been glassing for the day, really. We're seeing the same sheep move up and down and around the basin, so we think we've got that covered. Yeah. Tomorrow, we head north. I went for a bit of a hike, and as you come around this mountain here that we're on top of, the rock is pretty loose. It's pretty chossy out there, so it's a matter of, you know, we're gonna have to take our time and see what we shake out of the mountains. Yep. Had trouble sitting here all day, not being able to see into that just one little bowl. So it was kind of good to 
ticket off the box anyway. What could you see? No rams, actually no sheep. The best way is down off the side and just side hill it all the way. Tonight what we'll do is we'll go back to camp and then maybe we'll head out kind of where we were this morning just to make sure that we've got this basin completely covered because there was using lambs there this morning and they disappeared, right? Yeah. So who knows? You can't see every angle all the time. And we'll get as much as we can tonight before we head out of here. Yeah. I always struggle with the term clients. We have people come, we have clients come essentially, and after spending so much time in such a remote area where we depend on each other, you know, whether it's just one hunter and one guide out there or back here at camp, everybody depends on each other in such a different way than in town that these people are leaving our friends and I wouldn't consider these guys who come with us clients per se anymore. They're, we're just all friends hunting together by the end of it. There isn't many places left in the world that are this remote that you can come to and you're not going to see anybody else on the mountain. You're not going to see roads or get cell phone signal or anything like that. It's the last frontier really. Like now. The light is so awesome right here. Yeah. How do you feel today? I thought today was awesome. We had sheep right in the basin below us all day long. Yeah. What more can you ask for when you're sitting on top of the mountain is, is, is amazing. Yeah, we were so high we could almost see too far. <laughs> <laughs> we did see too far. Now it's just a matter of getting some food into us and... Get some sleep, we got a big day tomorrow. We're gonna do a push, right? Yeah. So we just had an emergency at camp and I have to go so Glenn, my husband, is going to come in and take over for me for a little bit. Hopefully I'll get back here once everything gets straightened out at camp, but I guess that's the life of being an outfitter. <laughs> Can't always be here guiding. As the world works and anybody that owns business knows that sometimes business happens and unfortunately for us, Glenda had to leave. But fortunately for us, her place is being taken by Glenn. So good to have you up on the mountain, buddy. Good to be out here. If we're gonna get up in the morning, we should probably go to bed. Yeah. My name's Glenn Robinson. Um, been at Canal Outfitters with Glenda for five years now. We're packed up, ready to go. Glenda flew out last night, Glenn flew in. Now we're ready to hit the hills. We spent the day here yesterday and now we're gonna move to the north. Glenn, beautiful country again. Oh, it's nice. It's gorgeous yeah. stuff out here. It'd be good to just keep moving and just start tearing it apart. Yeah, there's lots of little basins and, and spots that they can hide. So we'll just work our way slowly along the ridge, peek at it all. And Find a ram. Perfect. I think what from what I saw yesterday, the best way up, it's pretty chossy up there, but if we cut to the left around the bottom of it, we can come up through and then uh, continue on the ridge. Sounds good. Let's put some miles on. I'm glad it's not raining. It tried to rain last night. I think it's calling for a little rain the next few days after today, I think. Is it? Yeah. The remoteness of this country, there's some people that they just can't handle it. You get out here and you're isolated. There's, there's nobody around. You can look 360 degrees and you're it. Like each hunt that we go on, everything changes a little bit and it's almost day by day that you see the difference. You get guys come out here and they're just in awe of the country that they're in and the scenes that they see and the animals that are, that are present. Those are the guys that take away the richness of a hunt. You take a break. You sit here and you look out at this. And anybody that comes with the mindset that it's all about the kill is coming with the completely wrong attitude. Yeah. Like, if you 
to, to sit here and look out at this, it's unbelievable. It, it gets lost um, with, the, with the chase, with the... Oh, it does for sure. Right? Yeah. But I think the guys that, that come here and they take it all in for the total experience are the ones that walk away just richer in the end. They do, yeah.